It is May 26, 2015. We're in front of uh, High Point Apartments. It's the 1522 High Point Street. I'm sorry. Los Angeles, California, 90035. Waiting for the uh, HCID code inspector to come out. We did have an appointment. Let's see now. Let's try this. We did have an appointment for uh, 10.30 p.m. Excuse me, 10.30 a.m. It's May 26, 1522 High Point Street. Waiting for the inspector to come out. And we're here in front of the property. And let's see, I'll show you a picture of the property. And waiting for the inspector to come out to inspect the intercoms to give us some idea uh, why the code enforcement feels that the intercom is not a housing service and waiting for the code inspector to give us some idea as to let's see I think it's a little after 1030 now and it is uh, let's see May 26 2015 uh, hold on a second. It's about 10:30. We're in front of the property at uh, 1522 High Point Street, I'm trying to get uh, the intercom inspected. Waiting for the inspector to come. I don't see anybody yet. We did have an appointment for 10:30 uh, p.m. Excuse me, 10:30 a.m. It's May 26, 1522 High Point Street, waiting for the inspector to come out. And we're here in front of the property. And let's see, I'll show you a picture of the property. And waiting for the inspector to come out to inspect the intercoms to give us some idea uh, why the code enforcement feels that the intercom is not a housing service and waiting for the code inspector to give us some idea as to uh, to explain to us why under the health and safety code that the owner does not uh, excuse me that the city the government that's the rent control and the code enforcement why they feel that the intercom uh, that uh, 50, uh, 80 percent of the white tenants in this building or 80% of the tenants who happen to be white have a working intercom while 80% of the tenants in the building who happen to be black do not have a working intercom and this has been uh, going on for over a year now uh, it appears that when uh, white tenants have entered the building have moved in they received an intercom immediately a working intercom and black tenants are still waiting uh, about 12 months now over 12 months still don't have a working intercom and have not been offered a reduction in rent and that is the re regulation under city los angeles municipal code that if a tenant uh, if a tenant has a housing service that is reduced that they will receive a uh, rent reduction and these tenants including myself have not received a rent reduction it has been over 12 months and this is May 26 2015 uh, did you come to see someone Pardon? did you come to see someone or you just need to get in just here for an inspection but okay no one's here okay. uh, managers not here You're not with management are you no, I'm, not, I'm a tenant, but uh, the manager, she's in apartment 11, but I don't know if she's here right now. Yes, sir. I mean, if you need to get to get in, I can let you in, but... No, okay. Because <laughs> okay. the contractors are here, but, uh, you know... Good, how are you? Good. What's up, killer? <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to chase that bird. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Thanks, take care. Okay, you're welcome.
You're with the housing? You, you sure you didn't need to see anybody or just? No, it's, there's no unit number, there's no phone number, there's no name. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> That was interesting. That was, uh, let's see, I guess it's about 10.30, 10.30 a.m. And that was interesting. That was a gentleman that claimed he was from the housing department. And you, you might have heard what he just said. <laughs> he was trying to get in the building. And I, I said, do you need to get in? I'm a tenant. Uh, he went to the door. He, he tried the door. And uh, he just said that he has a complaint, but there's no name and there's no uh, <laughs> no name, no phone number, no apartment number. So my question would be, uh, why is that person even coming out? <laughs> I mean, that's very interesting, he's, he's here says he has no apartment number no name and uh, no phone number and I said do you need to get in the building he said no so what exactly was was his job today <laughs> Okay, here we go in front of the building again. It's uh, May 26, 2015. And there was a gentleman who just sped off. There was a gentleman I just spoke to a second ago. He was outside the building trying to get in. I asked him, did he uh, need to get in? He said no. Uh, he said he did have a complaint, but he had no apartment number, no name, no phone number. I just kind of wonder why would uh, somebody use taxpayers' money to come out uh, based on a complaint that you don't have a name, a phone number, or an apartment number. That doesn't make too much sense. But anyway, he just sped off in a white car. I don't know if I was able to get a picture of it, but uh, he had his uh, flashers on, emergency flashers, and then he just got in the car and just sped off. So I don't quite know what the purpose of that was, but here we are. The intercom still has not been fixed. The housing uh, code enforcement has not enforced the health and safety code uh, which requires that all wiring be in working condition all wiring and uh, on top of that uh, the tenants that are affected by this primarily black tenants 80 percent black tenants still do not have a working intercom so today is May 26 2015 about 10.40 a.m., Los Angeles, California, 90035. see from that uh, audio that the inspector came out did not have the intention whatsoever of getting into the building he was asked at least two times if he needed to get in the building and I think a third time I asked him if he needed to see the manager and he said no and so it was intentional on the part of city government here to not enter this building to not make the inspection I want to make clear here that the code enforcement inspectors, not just one person, but various people, different people, have been to this property, uh, in this property, probably over 15 times in the last uh, 12 months, and in particular have been in at least uh, this particular apartment and other people's apartments at least two or three times along with the owner. So they're well aware that the intercoms are not working in certain people's apartments. They're well aware of the impact on black tenants in the building um, as far as not having an intercom. It, an intercom is a housing service according to rent control, uh, rent stabilization department guidelines, city of Los Angeles under the Los Angeles Municipal Code. And not surprisingly, if 
there's something in the tenant's apartment that is owned by the owner, not by the tenant, but put there by the owner, and it's not working, the fact that it hasn't been maintained, that is also considered to be a housing service. The maintenance of these items in the apartment that are for the use of the tenant. So, um, and the and the Los Angeles rent control requires that tenants be giving a rent reduction if certain items in their apartment are not working or have not been maintained they're entitled to a rent reduction so uh, if not for racism we really haven't been given an explanation as to why the city government and as to why the property owner in this instance refuses to make the required required rent reduction and refuses to have the intercoms repaired in various units. Right now I'm going to go to a letter that was sent to the resident manager Marilyn London and this letter was sent on July 19th 2015 at 12:50 p.m. It was also sent to the, a copy to the owner to the Los Angeles Housing Community Investment Department to the rent stabilization uh, department, to the maintenance person for the building, also to the owner of the building, and a few other people. And there's some questions here I asked the resident manager. So I'm going to redact uh, parts of this letter. Please answer the following questions in writing by first class mail within the next seven days. And this is to the resident manager of the building who lives on the property. Number one, what are the qualifications for a tenant to be assigned an intercom? Number two, which tenants by apartment number do not qualify for an intercom? Number three, which tenants by apartment number had their rent reduced because their intercom is not working? Number four, how much was the rent reduced for tenants who did not receive a working intercom? Number five, Specify the fee for intercom at the 1522 High Point Street in detail by corresponding apartment number, the apartment unit, and the fee for intercom service. Number six, are there any other qualifications for having an intercom at 1522? Example, race, color, sex, source of income, etc. Number seven, what is Cliff Renfrew's employment title? Cliff Renfrew is frequently seen on the property. He collects the rent, but we really don't know what is his title. What's his employment title? Number eight, what employee is responsible for the assignment of intercoms? Number nine, list any tenant whose apartments do not have working intercoms. Number ten, how is the first come first served applied to the assignment of intercoms? Number eleven, what state government training or certification or license have you received to be hired as a resident manager? And last question, I'm, I'm skipping around here, but last question. Have you received sensitivity training on the civil rights laws that govern the rights of tenants? Please respond by first class mail in writing within seven days of receipt of this email. Again, this was emailed and will be mailed to the owner, uh, excuse me, to the resident manager and the owner of the property, but it was uh, sent to the email uh, supplied to tenants, and this is to the resident manager, Marilyn London, and also to the owner of the property, Walter Barrett. And that's in reference to the intercom problem at this property.